Hey everybody, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the Royal Navy Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 4 Denae class, or D class, of cruisers. There were 12 planned, but only 8 completed D class cruisers, and they were built between 1918 and 1922. The 8 completed ships are the HMS Denae, Dauntless, Dragon, Delhi, Dunedin, Durban, Dispatch, and Diomede. The D-Class was essentially a lengthened and improved C-Class cruiser to add an additional 6-inch gun mount and improved sea keeping capabilities. The D-Class also sported additional torpedo tubes and depth charge racks as a result of the lessons learned from the Battle of Jutland. In the interwar period between World War I and World War II, all of the D-Class cruisers had their anti-aircraft armament standardized. And as an interesting aside, during World War II, the HMS Delhi was converted to an anti-aircraft cruiser in the United States. When she was returned to England, she had 5-inch 38 caliber dual-purpose guns mounted in the Mark 30 single-barrel mounting seen on many of the U.S. destroyers in the game. She was also given the Mark 37 fire control system to improve both surface and air accuracy. All eight of these ships spent most of their service time escorting convoys and task force. However, a couple of them did also participate in the intercepting of several commerce ships and transports. As an interesting, notable ship, the HMS Dunedin participated in the hunt for Scharnhorst and Gneisenau after the sinking of the armed merchant cruiser Rawalpindi. She also captured the German tanker Lothringen, which had several Enigma cipher machines on board. Dunedin would also go on to capture the German merchant ship Hanover, which later became the first British escort carrier, Audacity. In terms of her in-game gameplay, she plays most like the other Royal Navy cruisers we've played thus far, meaning most of her time is going to be spent either kiting enemy ships that are shooting at her, or pressing DDs and moving them out of caps when it's safe to do so. She's best played while constantly being mobile and constantly abusing that rudder to avoid and minimize the amount of damage she does take. This requires a high level of situational awareness to maximize her potential, and part of that situational awareness is setting yourself up to be in location to intercept other ships by poking out around islands. And of course, her 6 kilometer torpedoes also mean that you are going to have to be very comfortable with behind island ambush mechanics in order to successfully utilize them. Of course, once you do get used to using them, these ships are actually quite a lot of fun in a straight-up brawl. I don't particularly mind the way that these ships play. Some people don't like how fragile they are, but they can be quite a lot of fun. And of course, those single-launch torpedoes, having six of them per side, is quite impressive. Let's run down the stats. She has 20,900 hit points. Her armor at the thickest point is only 76 millimeters, just over 3 inches. In terms of artillery, she has six of the six-inch guns with a max range of 12 and a half kilometers. There are two guns located up front, two in the middle, and two on the rear. And in terms of gun angles, while not particularly good, they also aren't bad. I frequently find myself wishing that these middle ones had a little bit better angles on them and that the rear turrets actually traversed a little bit quicker. In terms of torpedoes, she, like I said, she has 12 total, 6 on each side. They have a 6 kilometer range and a 59 knot speed. They do have a very short detection range of 1.2 kilometers, so very hard to detect. Her anti-aircraft complement consists of 4 quad 50 cal guns, as well as 2 8-barreled pom-pom, 40 millimeter pom-pom guns. She has a maximum speed of 30 knots a turning circle of 540 meters, and a rudder shift time of 6.1 seconds. And as an interesting note, like the other Royal Navy cruisers thus far, she gains speed while maneuvering, which is really weird. Her detection range by sea is 10.1 kilometers, and her detection range by air is 5.4 kilometers. And of course, just like the previous tier, we're going right back to the standard modules for these ships. Main Armaments Mod 1, and of course you can make a, a solid case for Propulsion Systems Mod 1 or Damage Control Systems Mod 1. As I explained in the last video, I prefer Damage Control Systems Mod 1 over the Propulsion Mod 1 simply because 
I usually don't have my repair down long enough for this to be an issue. So, all right, let's go to the battle video. It is an interesting video. It's right around 60,000 damage, which isn't a huge number, but it shows exactly what I want you guys to understand about how these ships play. So let's go to the battle video. All right, so this is going to be unequivocally a interesting match, that's for sure. So, tier 4 match, as you can see, pretty good mix of stuff, including carriers, so there's, that's always that's always a good thing to have thrown in there as well. And, well, let's, uh, let's see how this goes. Like I said, it's, it's right about 60,000 damage, and, and ultimately, these ships have a very distinct playstyle, and, and nothing has changed, truthfully, much from Caledon. In fact, a lot of the same tactics are still required. The ship still really requires a bit of a kiting-centric gameplay style. Our team is kind of set up on New Dawn to go north, so we're going to go north. I will be headed up north, and then there will be some juicy targets down south. And then we'll head up back north at the very end. So, I don't know how that all works out, but apparently it does. So like I was saying, you know, this ship really requires a, a delicate hand and a constant amount of rudder input. And if you're not used to that, again, this is not a good line of ships for you. It has to be constant. These ships play like a destroyer with the Citadel. That's very easy to Citadel by pretty much everything. And if your goal, your plan, your intentions are to somehow survive that, well, <laughs> you, you got to be wiggling and waggling. Anyway, here's the gun angles. You can see them. They're not particularly good or solid. It's one of those things where, like I said, you know, the, the gun angles leave a lot to be desired. They're not bad, but they're not great. You just have to expose way too much of a broadside to comfortably use them. So there's always going to be one turret that is best left alone. Also, we do have those single launch torpedoes. They are extremely useful, guys. Please do not forget to use the single launch torpedoes. If you're wondering where to launch them, I mean, the indicator, okay, pay attention to where the ship is. I actually just got done recording the footage today for the uh, tutorial on torpedo launching, so expect that kind of information to be coming soon, at least my idea. So we've got a destroyer over here. I can see that there's at least one other destroyer over here, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn ourselves around and we're going to see if we can't take out one of these destroyers or maybe both of them. We've got hydro, we've got good guns for killing destroyers, we've got torpedoes, we got a whole toolkit here to kill them and that's what we're here for. Killing destroyers. Okay, and we escaped without beaching ourselves. <laughs> Sometimes a novel concept. And no, we're not going to make it around this, so... <laughs> well, we got a hit! 879 damage! Woohoo! And we got some bombers over top of us, which is no good, but... Uh, well, that's alright. Nothing is more frustrating than having dive bombers fly over you. Except for having any aircraft and having to not do anything to them at all. Ever. <laughs> That Wix bailed out that side, and, well, here he is. Oh, thanks. You see, you know, had you waited just a couple seconds, you probably could have snuck out of that whole thing, and... Unfortunately, I can't shoot you back. So we'll go around the other side. Oh, you're coming back through? Okay. We're going to go ahead and launch those, and while we're waiting for him, we'll shoot at something else that's soft and squishy. Now, again, pay attention to that rudder shift. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. And we're going to throw a Hey Cutie in there just for good measure. <laughs> that is definitely what we call a, a very good predictive torpedo wall. In fact, the only way he would have been able to avoid that is simply just to slow down. Yeah, which he didn't. We're far enough away here that I'm pretty confident that I'm not going to be taking too much fire. Most of the their ships are focused currently on our Clemson and Kaiser over there. And I am 
not a huge threat at this point. In fact, most of the damage from this game is going to come in the form of torpedoes. So if you're expecting a lot of good gun hits and good, lots of good gun damage, this is not the video for you. Of course, we're going to come over here and see if we can't take out this Phoenix. You know, I'm, I'm looking for soft and squishy targets here. I'm, uh, Phoenix has a really large citadel. There's also a destroyer over there, which is reasonably soft, but these guys are so far out of our range that if I were to go chase them, it would take me out of battle. However, we do have a Kohlberg here. Yeah, let's go for him. Let's see what we can do about him. We'll go ahead and bait him and see if we can't get him to go. Launching torpedoes there, that might have been a bit premature, but uh, you never know when one of those guys are going to decide to make a sudden... Well, it'd be from his perspective a right-hand turn. And there's a lot of advantages to launching those torpedoes then. Especially since you have a whole other set on the other side of six that you can use if you really need to brawl. Not a whole lot of gun damage there. We're, we're definitely outrunning this Caladon that is busy shooting away at me. wonder if he's watched my How to Play video yet. Where's this Kohlberg at? like to shoot at him again. Okay, here he comes. Alright, and you'll see here, trying to bring all of those those guns to bear. See, he's shooting AP. He knows what's up. Okay. We're, we're bouncing some of his lighter stuff, but as soon as I start to bring that some of those rear guns to bear... You can see I'm going to start taking a lot of damage. Boom, there's, you know, 2,600 hit points gone. And then we start bouncing them again, thankfully. We are going to get that torpedo hit. There he goes. And that's, you know, launching torpedoes there in a manner in which they cannot dodge. So we also have this Kaiser now that is also in range. And he is so thoroughly not paying attention that it's quite safe for me to set this up. Now, in order to maximize my prep time where I'm still relatively in stealth, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this island. I'm going to launch them. I'm going to launch the torpedoes this one way first. And again, we want to launch some short of the marker as well as at it. And what that's going to do is that's going to, if he slows down or turns slightly due to maneuvering because he's engaging those guys over there, it'll, it'll count for that. And since, well, I didn't quite get as far north as I wanted to, he's coming around the edge of the mountain here. We're just going to have to go with what we got. And, well, <laughs> needless to say, uh, it's probably a bit late for him. Unfortunately, only two torpedo hits. And now I've got his full and unadulterated tension. So we're going to start our turn and we're going to start launching these guys. And we are going to launch them short. You can see he's turning in and... We want those torpedoes to line up and hit when they do hit. And... Bonk! Kill is mine. Unfortunately, our carrier... Yeah, I'm gonna eat one of our friendly torps. Oops. It's alright, carrier. I forgive you. We'll go ahead and heal back what we've got. Now, unfortunately, in this match, I do end up dying before the end. But you can see here just kind of the, the usefulness of, of the constant dodging. You can see how it was working out with that long range fire. They were having a real hard time of actually hitting me with anything. Also, it set me up pretty good. We got three torpedo kills. I mean, what, what, what not to like about that. And it, and it was all at close range. You know, you got to set yourself up and use those islands against them. You, you're using the islands as cover. But by the same token, you're using it to blindside him with torpedoes because they're going to come out and be like, all right, I'm going to get this guy. He's got no armor. It'll be great. And the minute he pops around that corner, there's, you know, six torpedoes waiting for him. And then, uh, oops, I'm dead. <laughs> so, you know, that's one of those things you get really used to playing it. If you're a destroyer captain, man, it is like a staple of the gameplay for you is to do that. Now you can see a Clemson off in the distance. He's uh, going after their carrier. And it'd be nice if I could get over there. <laughs> also be nice if I had more range to actually engage the targets that are out there. And yeah, you saw that right. The Langley got die hard killing the Clemson. 
And we're going to find out here in a minute that uh, his rudder had gotten taken out by one of the the battleships that shot at him. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's that's pretty comical. I guess he ran right into him because he, his rudder got knocked out. <laughs> Which, Whatever, man. It's all good. It happens. Very lewd. Yes, very lewd. I'm sure it was awkward. I've got myself and uh, Campbelltown here in, in their cap. We've got two BBs behind us. And we are going to make the best use of all of this. And we're going to find this carrier. Now, if I was smart, I would have just stayed in the cap and... Well, we would have won this by me not dying. We're going to win this by, you know, our team just doing well. But unfortunately, yeah, things happen. So I was trying to stay in the cap. We're going to turn out first. And then there's going to be a set of torpedo bombers that come in. So, well, we're going to reprioritize our anti-aircraft to the to the torpedo bombers. That way we don't get taken out by the torpedo bombers. Okay, now he's going the other way, so we're going to turn the other way. We've got plenty of maneuverability to take advantage of all of this. And there's no reason I shouldn't have friggin' been able to dodge these torpedoes. But should have just kept going straight. Would have been fine. Anyway, there's that. So we end up getting taken out. And we end up not killing that uh, that poor Langley. So we're gonna go ahead and skip to the end here. And the end battle screen: sixty-one thousand eight hundred four damage seven torpedo hits you know a 904 base xp second on the team not not a bad end result for how quick the game ended and there's the credit screen anyway i i don't like this ship nearly as much as i like some of the other ships in the line so this is definitely not my favorite to play but it has some boat benefits to it over the caladon i not a whole lot i'm your peacekeeper like comment subscribe and thank you guys for watching